Hi everyone. What I want to do is I want to show you how I'm building my solar generator, my do-it-yourself solar generator. Um, that I've gotten some ideas from on uh, YouTube and some of the, some equipment that I already had laying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ammo power bo um, ammo box from Harbor Freight. Um, these you can get for seven dollars when they're not on sale, then half price when they do, and they're a really nice size. They have a, a gasket that protects your items in there. Um, has a funny smell to it. The plastic is sturdy, but you can use uh, like a, your pocket knife or something to cut things out. Um, really, really nice um, box to do something with it. And there are a lot of YouTube videos that use these boxes um, to create a, um, a power box or a solar generator. The difference here, this is a very unique solar generator because at the heart of it, we'll be using a Buddy Pole Power Mini. And these are specifically made for the ham operator and that's because it uses these Anderson power poles as a great display, very easy to program, and it it's pretty hefty in terms of the amount of uh, load that you can have. For example, this one, uh, you can go up to 35 um, amps continuously. Another great thing about this, um, this one's the Buddy Pole, Buddy pole Power Mini 1. Um, this one has a USB-A, which goes to 1.5 amps, 5 uh, volts. The Power Mini 2, though, goes to 4 amps. Um, th these are color-coded. That's awesome. You got uh, Anderson Power Poles that are blue here. B for battery, maybe even for the BioEno. Uh, by the way, we're going to be using the 12-volt, 12 12-amp 12 uh, battery. I like these BioNLs because they have circuit, circuitry inside to manage the battery. But of course, if this is a solar generator, you're going to need a charge controller. Um, it also The uh, Power Mini also has these yellow uh, Anderson Power Pole for the sun. So I love these that you won't mess up which connection goes where. And for some solar controllers, you know, by reading um, by reading some of the documentation or looking at some YouTubers, a lot, a lot of people say don't use the load on those particular solar controllers. Um, this one, I have no problems hooking things up here like my radio and the interference so far, I haven't, haven't heard any. Um, I know sometimes when you're using some of these devices, you might pick up some noise. So far, I haven't. I start learn, you know, when you start building one of these, you start learning how to put things together. Uh, you, you look at products like, you know, how do you put Anderson power poles together? How do you, how do you connect switches, right? Um, how do you use these open barrels, which by the way, these open barrel things. Um, I put it on, on Facebook one day. I was like, what is this called? And I had everybody tell me different names on it. Fortunately, um, the open barrel seems to be the most general term. Uh, and then, you know, these panels. Um, these panels um, that uh, you can get at different electronic store. You know, how do you connect them? What type of power can you use with them? Let's think about this box here, how we're going to operate it. So um, the heart of the solar generator will be the, bu the Buddy Pole Power Mini 1 here. Okay, so I'm going to give you an idea of how, you know, just laying it out here on the table and then we're going to put it in these, these holes here. So um, here I have the solar. So here you plug in the battery, right? So I'm not going to do that, but I'll just put it over here. We'll just pretend we have the battery here, right? 
and we'll pretend that we connect it there. I won't do it right now. Then um, I'll need a connection for the solar. The cool thing about this, and I learned this from the buddy poll, you know, because I was wondering why are there different colors for Anderson purple? There's really no need for it, right? Positive and, and um, positive and negative is very important, but having these connections here give you a sense of what port goes what. Usually the black is black and the red one will change in color. And in my box over here, I put it on the end, so when it comes out over here, right, and I got these panels at eBay. I really don't like them too much uh, because you have to screw them on here and it's not like you, there's a bolt, a plastic bolt to tie it. That's one of the things I didn't like, but maybe I can find them somewhere else. But anyway, when this comes out, right, I know that yellow means solar. So when I have my um, foldable, you know, power film, solar panel, boom, I know, I know to connect it here or the solar panel that I have on my roof. So color coding is to me pretty exciting. Okay, and then I have this um, panel, uh, USB um, panel, I guess, connection where it does have a bolt over here where I can put it in the box. Right, it has a little lid, and then this will go over here, um, and then that will connect. This will connect to the box. Now, on the box, I don't remember where I. Oh, well, actually, I remember now. On the box, I'm going to put it over here. Now, one side here is power. Two of them are going to be two. Two of these. Two of these are going to be for the radio, Anderson Power Pole, and then one for like a light or something. And then I'm gonna have also a um, cigarette lighter. Um, I thought it was, at first I thought it was kind of a gimmick to have a cigarette lighter connection, but it turns out that it is important. And then on my other side here, I'm gonna put um, the USB, a switch, and then another USB, USB-C. Uh, and then of course over here is the for the um, solar panel, but okay. So this one, this one comes directly from the buddy pole. Uh, so I know that when I see this one, because I do have another one, which is this one right here. This one is a USB. Um, this one is a USB uh, three, but this is a Q, a QC. 3.0 and then this is a USB-C so these two here I know is from one of the loads this one comes directly from the the uh, buddy the um, buddy pole power mini okay so this one is going to be connected then um, I have two loads these loads could go up to 35 amps continuously so one load I'm going to connect I'm going to have a Y connection right here. This is a Y connection. And I've colored them orange. <laughs> um, I, I didn't know what other color to pick. Radio for orange? No. Icom, right? I would have been nice if they were blue for indigo or something, but no, they're orange. Um, but this is a Y connection. And so again, in this case over here, I'm going to have one connection that's going to go here and then I have another connection that's going to go over here. And so I have two connections that I know and they're color coded. I know that's going to be in the same load. Uh, these will be connected somehow with, uh, I have, um, I was using, I don't, I don't have any here, but cotter pins. Um, here it is. Here's a cotter pin. I was using one of these cotter pins, but I really didn't like them because when you slide them in, they slide out, depending on the size. Finally, I found these pins that I found them on, I believe, found on eBay. And in those, you can slide them in, 
to these holes that are right here. But sometimes uh, the holes, these particular holes are a little bit small. So you have to make them a little bit bigger, but okay. So that one you can connect here. And then you have these two ready to go. And oh, one thing about the um, this wire that I really like, I didn't I didn't get any zip wire. I should have gotten the zip the zip type, but I couldn't find it. And hopefully, uh, I can find that wire um, later. But this type of wire is very soft, flexible. I was using another type of wire which was pretty stiff, and that you know you can't really conform to a, to a shape and that stiff wire can eventually make these connections you know um give more stress and i really didn't want to do that um so the this is the y to connect for the load and then the last one this harness this one was a lot more challenging to put together and that's because I just wanted to learn how to do something with the switch um, I thought the switch with the glowing light this one was cool you know but uh, it turned out to be a lot more work than I thought it would be um, but here let me see if I can explain um, so it has a so one thing I wanted from this load two was a USB-C. I mean, that's that's the big thing at first. I want a USB-C, right? And that's going to give me an ability to hook up a um, kind of like an iPad or something with USB-C, right? No way I'm going to charge a MacBook Pro with this. This is this is not going to handle it. And then I thought, well, the other connection because Power Mini, the Power Mini 1 only does 1.5. This will give me enough power, a QC 3.0, to power one of these uh, Raspberry Pi 4s. So that's why I had this. And I thought, well, I'm just going to connect this directly to that and I should be done. But then I, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe. Um, I should have a switch to turn it on and off um, because maybe um, I, I don't want this, you know, be turn, to be turned on all the time. And so I said, okay, let me let me see if I can put the switch on. Well, the switch has three connections, which um, you know, at first it was a bit challenging, but one, I believe it's the middle one. The middle one. Is the one that goes to the power and I know that's really hard to see all this I'll put the schematic up of course but the middle pin is the one that goes to the power so let's connect it to the power to the load might as well so the middle one goes to the power uh, which is red and then the hot one and then this hot one the last one or that might be even pin number one actually but this this other positive pin that one goes directly to the USB and then you know I had that at first and um, I was pretty happy with that and then the ground the ground goes to to the load and I thought okay that's pretty cool I really like this situation here you know I'm not gonna have any other issues but then I found out that I wanted to put um, a lamp. <laughs> so I said, if I'm in the field, it would be nice to put on a lamp. And the lamp, I know you can't really see it here, but here it is. This lamp is from, um, from Ikea. This bulb I got from Amazon, this is a 12 volt bulb. So this lamp I think was less than $20. I cut the uh, connection that goes to the wall and I made sure which one's positive which one's negative put a um, Anderson power pole to it and I'm not sure if I can if I can reach it here let me see here it is yeah so right here and this is it right here 
So I said, hey, I want to connect it to load two. How do I do that if I already have all this stuff? Well, I have to make another Anderson power pole. And sure enough, I did. And there it is. So load two, I can put on a lamp. And of course, all this is being run by the sun, uh, by the sun, by the battery. But if the sun is charging the battery, I'm gonna get a free light, almost free. That's pretty awesome. So, um, so that that was another thing that I said. Okay, let me do that. So, this is basically this connection here is a Y connection. One power goes directly to the lamp that's going to be turned on on time, and then this switch here will turn this on and off. And again, I don't know if I need the switch really. The switch, by the way, does um, when you uh, turn it on. The, there is some power that's being drained. I'm not sure how many milliamps, maybe like 10 milliamps. Not a lot, but over time it is. And then I got to thinking about, you know, hey, all, all this is great, right? I can finally power or charge, actually over here, I can finally charge a lot of things like batteries, right? Um, batteries and um, maybe my uh, other devices that I have, like maybe my camera, uh, maybe other things. But of course, there are some things that you cannot seem to work, uh, or there are some devices that you can't plug in to, um, to a USB device like this. Um, it needs to be plugged in like you know, um, like a wall socket. And that's where I was like, okay, maybe I do need a 12 volt cigarette lighter. And that's where this comes in. At first I thought these were gimmicks. It's like, why do I need one? Um, because most of the time you just connect this to maybe an HT, which I thought, well, I'll just use one of these or one of these and I'll just use an Anderson power pole. But it turns out that there are some devices that needs to be plugged in to the wall. And so um, with some inverter, one of those small uh, inverters, you can connect that here. And then you can hook up some other device. So I said, okay, we're gonna need one of these. How am I gonna do that? Well, as you can see, this, this black, um, the ground, that one goes to Looks like that one goes over here to my um, panel of USB A and C. And this other connection that comes from this guy, that one is plugged into the Wago. The Wago, the Wago has all the po all the positives. I'm sorry. All the negatives, right? The Wago has the negative for the switch. This guy and this guy. They all go in here. And th these are nice. This Wago, um, you just lift this up and they come out and you plug it in. These are, this is not a toy. These do do very well on the field. Instead of a, one of those um, twisty nuts, which is less expensive, of course. But I thought, hey, let me try it out. And it hasn't come out loose. Um, as you can see, this positive goes over here, right, to, um, the cigarette lighter goes over here to the uh, USB-A, USB-C. So I had to figure out a way, somehow, how am I going to connect two into one? Um, so I found these, um, these connections here, um, I'm trying to remember the name of them again, um, the barrel. So these barrel connections, this one's, a, this one's, um, let's see if I can take them out. Yeah. So this one is like a Y connection. And uh, I found these at Orvac. This is a store that we have over here in Orange County. Um, but really nice. This, this is really convenient. And then I can hook these up here. The only thing I don't like, these are exposed, so maybe put some tape on it, 
so they won't be. Um, but okay, so that load goes here. This switch is to turn this one on and off. Do we really need that? I've been thinking about that lately. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't look like we do. But again, this is a prototype. This is just an idea. This, this switch probably is better uh, to control. Well, that's, that's another, well, this switch should have been more to control maybe the battery, right? Or if any battery power is going in or out. Who knows? Um, okay, so you get an idea of all the different connections. But one thing that is lacking, and I definitely um, I want you to take this advice, is that none of these have um, fuses. And that's something that I'm really am concerned I should. I know I have a fuse for the radios. Each radio that I have does have a fuse. Uh, so that's protected. But should these have fuses? Um, any of these connections? Maybe like this one should have a fuse. Um, that's something that I have to learn. I'm, I'm looking for an elegant solution for a fuse where you just cut it. And then there's some fuses that have like these springs. It's like a post and then another, like a stop and then a spring and you put it together. It's really nice, but I haven't found that. If you know what those are called, please put it on the on the um, description, not description, the, the post on the bottom. Leave a message, tell me what they are. That would be nice. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this together. Now I'll let you know kind of like the connections now I want to show you how I put it all together. It takes a little while um, to figure out, but I think, again, it's more of a learning process. It gives you an insight of how to make things. Um, again, I have uh, three holes here. These are going to be for the USB and the switch, and I have four holes here one for the cigarette lighter, two for the radio, two for the radio, one, two for both radios, right? This is the Y. And then an, an extra uh, Anderson Power Pole for the light. And then I have another hole here somewhere, right? Another Anderson Power Pole. This one is for the solar. All these are, they all have these Teflon screws, which are really hard to put on. They're, they're not easy. Um, and I really don't like them. I'd rather have them um, with the screw. If you know of a manufacturer that does that, where instead of instead of these holes, the, you have like a, a big um, nut, please tell me. I would love those instead. Okay. So when I started building this together, I noticed that the battery, uh, when I put the battery on, uh, when I put the battery on here, it was a little bit too short, so I need to make it a little bit bigger. So I got this uh, piece of wood, kind of like balsa wood. Um, it's not really, it's something else, right? It's called basswood. It's one eighth of an inch. I needed one eighth of an inch more, um, a little bit, a little bit higher, so that I, I was able to connect things better, um, and. The orientation of the battery is very important, um, so I'm going to put the battery in here, and it fits perfectly. Now it does have this connection here, this barrel connection, and it would be nice maybe to drill a hole somewhere, you know. But somehow make it look nice. Maybe you know, maybe have another type of connection where uh, it, it's kind of like a panel connection so that uh, if I ever need to connect it to the wall, I can. Or I can just open this up, plug it in, and it becomes, you know, like a power box. Um, okay. As you can see, there's a very nice tight fit in there. So it's working there, all right. And the first thing um, with my notes here, <laughs> I'm going to use the solar. So... Uh, the connections, when I make them, I usually have one of these testers. Um, it's always good. I mean, I already tested these um, 
they do click on really nicely. But I use this to check to see if the connection is really well there. So I'll put this underneath right there and then that comes out. Now, one thing about this is that it's a good idea to have uh, these pins or a cotter pin. Now I have this little box filled with a bunch of like Anderson power poles and I think it, it's it in here yet. Yeah. I have this punch that I got. Uh, let me see, it says here it's uh, 3 30 seconds and as it's very hard to see but it has like a round tip to it that fits really nicely with the uh, pin. And one thing though, you gotta be careful not to punch the battery. So I'll move that over on the side. Let me see. Yeah, I should just, just get it out of the way here for now. Just in case I punch through it. So here I'm gonna put the connection, power, Anderson power pole, right? And then this is the hard part. You gotta kind of sort of feel where this hole matches. So uh, it's gonna be somewhat of a pain because sometimes you miss it. Fortunately, I've been doing these now, <laughs> these holes now these holes are a little bit better. I did have to use the drill to open them up a little bit. And these are much softer to put through. Unfortunately, the pins are really long. These are an inch long. Um, next time I think I'm gonna buy half an inch. Might be enough. It does go through, unfortunately. But we'll see. Let's, let's, um, let's put the battery in now. It should fit nicely. It does. I'm trying to make sure it's not doing anything. Yeah, it's fine. If I feel like there's not enough room or something, maybe I can pull it out. But I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm okay. So this right here, I'm going to put on the side over here. And as you can see, this flexible wire is really nice. It really conforms to the space that you want. Let's put the Anderson, uh, no, the, um, let's put the Buddy Pole Power Mini. Let's, um, let's connect it. it says uh, Power Mini. And uh, you have over here, it says 12 point, uh, 14.27 volts. And then let's connect the solar right there. Okay, it's nice and pliable. Everything seems to fit nicely, right? And that's the important thing. Does everything fit okay? All right, so the next thing will be uh, the, um, I think the orange, yes, these orange Anderson power poles. So the load, so let's connect that. So here, I did put a boot on this, so I can have a better grip. You don't need it, but I did. Okay, nice. And so as you can see, this is a very bulky connection here. And with the flexibility of the wire, it's really nice that I have that. And make sure, you know, it, everything goes nicely. Um, Maybe this should go under, yeah. This one should go over. And one connection will go here, right around there. And it's really hard to see. All right, we'll do that one first. And here on the side. Now, these connections, the, this A could be on the bottom or on the top. I usually, I don't know why, but I usually like them on the bottom. Um, I think that's upside down actually, but one thing I forgot to show you here is uh, Make sure that this connection fits nicely 
It does. Sometimes it's not flushed right here and you have to adjust it. But I've been doing this a little bit <laughs> and the first time I did it was like, wait a minute, it's not working. Uh, here's my other pin. And then I'm gonna try to like figure out where the hole is. It could be there. Uh-huh, very nice. Very easy. I'm gonna be careful though. Maybe not. Let's see. Sometimes you can double check here. Ah, look at that. Green. Yeah, a nice little green light means it's connected. That's a good sign. But can we press this down any anymore? Yes. It's just a little bit tough. So um, I don't again I don't want to break any of these. These Again, come from eBay. The holes are not quite the perfect size. I had to drill them a little bit, and I didn't draw. I didn't want to drill it too much, or else it might be too loose. That's the only thing that. <coughs> That's the only thing I don't like that these are um, coming out, and I'm not sure that's going to be an issue in the future. All right, uh, let's see. So that wire is okay there. I'm gonna put this wire over here. And connect that. Connect that over here. Okay. It's coming out, okay. Here's my other pin. And uh, looks like the plastic here is a little bit bent. That's okay, that's fine. These boxes are not super sturdy. They're not made out of metal. It's just plastic. Uh, this one, nice. Nice and easy. Perfect. Okay, and you can, let's test it. Make sure it works. Uh -huh. A little bit tough there. What happened here? See, it doesn't fit very nicely. Uh, that's because probably this might be a little bit too, not exactly where I want it. Let me see. Let's take it out. You gotta be a little bit careful. There you go. Okay. So maybe this will work. Put it in there. Make sure, I don't know if that's gonna work even better, but we'll see. Then put this pin here. Again, you gotta match. That looks nice right there. Right. That seems to be locked. Okay, let's try that. Push it a little more. Pretty good. It's not perfect, but acceptable. There's a little bit of, of a resistance, just a little bit. But I can see it's pretty flushed. Yeah, it's fine. There's a, right here, there's a gap, which I really like it to have, just like over here. And as you can see, the A's are upside down. Most products, I think, have them the other way. Um, just like the USB connections. For me, they tend to be upside down, but that's a preference, that's up to you. So I'm gonna try to push, I'm gonna push this down a little more. Okay, good. Those pins are not gonna go anywhere. These connections are gonna be nice and tight. And then this one, I'm gonna put the wire over here. Uh, maybe even on the bottom there, see? That's nice. All this, I'm not sure where I want to put all this here. Let's see. That might might just stay that way, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Every time I build this, it's I think I learned something new. Um, and all these connections here, there's no wires that are exposed in any way. 
So I make sure that there's no nothing that will short. Well, at this point, <laughs> you never know. Let me see, maybe we can put it underneath here like this. No, that's gonna be like that for a little bit. I think that's okay. That's fine for it is. All right, wow. The next thing will be um, our connection for the USB Power Mini for the USB that comes out of it. All right, let's try that out now. So let's connect it over here. And again, we gotta be very careful not stressing any of these connections, right? Like over here, we don't wanna put a lot of stress there. That's not very good if we do. And I'll just put this as nicely as I can without, again, without putting too much stress, because the more stress you put on these connections, the more likely they're gonna, they're gonna break. And then, ah, that's not gonna work. Okay, here's the first mistake I did. I gotta put, a, I gotta put, uh, that's, that's because I haven't done this for a little bit, for about a week. I took it apart, because I was doing something else. Um, trying to figure something out and then putting these, this together takes a particular um, skill uh, to remember. Okay, so we might have to lift this up a little bit. Okay, just fine. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was in the bottom. Yeah, it'll probably be on the top. Okay which is fine. And so the orientation of the wire now is different. I'm gonna put the wire first. Well, maybe I should tie it first. Uh, this way. Okay. I can put that right here. And then we'll screw this. And then I don't, want, I don't know if I should have this wire on the bottom. Probably, that's for the solar. Yeah, we'll, put it, we'll leave it in the bottom. And then we'll see. Orientation might look a little crooked here. Okay, good. That's getting screwed on. This kind of helps me with the orientation, this plastic, but that plastic could also move. So you should always keep an eye on that. And this is a little bit challenging, screwing this bolt, because sometimes it's not perfect, you know. And I don't want to really tighten it too much because then it might strip. So, you know, I don't usually use pliers or anything. I'm sure if I want to do this permanently, I could put some glue on there, but feel like doing that okay so you that's gonna be it's not that tight nope so let's use my right hand here okay and you also want to make sure that this is aligned this plastic Screw it just a little bit. Just want things to look sort of good. All right, right here. There you go. Let's try that again. Okay, that should be good enough. As you can see, it goes over the battery. And so we're going to have to make this um, power mini go on top which is fine and the other wire the the wire for the solar you can see went underneath which is fine too and now the idea is to uh, gingerly put the wire this unfortunately is three feet of 
wire. I couldn't find anything smaller. But this will do. And again, you want to position the wire so that everything else feels natural in its, in its uh, position. You don't want to force anything. Again, you don't want to stress any of these uh, lines. And with the flexibility of the, of the wire is going to be great. Like for example, the battery wire here wasn't long enough to meet the height because of the height of these, these um, uh, panels. So that's why I've had to put the board because this wire was pushing down a little bit of this connection and that's not good. Well, again, we, we, we want things to be a little bit loose, a little bit pliable. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to test it. Let's see if we can test this. We have a, a GoPro battery charger unit here. Let's put that there. I think the orientation looks good. And then pop this in here. Let's see if we get the light. Yep, we sure did. Meaning that the battery is now charging this battery here. And of course, if we press this button, we can see that it's taking up, they are to see 0.3 amps or 300 milliamps of power. Okay, so that connection is ready to go. And we'll charge up that later. And the cool thing is it's gonna be charged uh, by the battery, but the battery is being charged from the sun. So, hey, that's not a bad deal. Okay. Now we uh, need our couple of connections. This connection here where I call it the lamp, right? Or it could be in something else. And then the cigarette lighter, the switch, and a USB connection. Uh, usually, I put the switch here and the, and the USB here on this connection here. But we'll see. I mean, that's, that's up to... The orientation's up to you. Now, this is all put together. I think um, we're definitely going to have to pull some of this apart. Uh, we're going to have to pull it apart so that we can thread it through. Um, let's see. What do we do first? I guess we could put the, let's put this piece here. This is the Anderson power pole. Oh, we'll put it, might as well put it under here, right? Right there. Again, we could put this here, maybe as a guide, maybe help us. Now at this point, it seems like this is getting in the way, maybe, and we might take it off. We'll see. Um, probably. Let's take it off. Now, it's always important to take off the battery first, and then these other connections, especially the solar, if it's connected to the to the solar. So these these are nice, okay. And then this one's ready as well. So we're gonna. Disconnect that, and we gotta make sure that we don't lose sight. You see that wire, that black wire. Oh, disconnect this. That black wire probably should go under. Okay, there we go. Okay. So this. Uh, <laughs> This video is going to take longer than I expected, but you can see step by step what I'm doing in the thought process. Give you a sense of what I had to go through and some of the pieces. Okay. That you kind of have to think about. 
And of course, this is not being turned on because it's not connected to the um, power mini. And so I'm going to slide this even further down. That's nice. Very nice. I'm going to get probably half inch. Uh, again, this is all prototype. I'm definitely a want. Um, I want something a little bit more safe to be like more flushed. And then this one, nope, that's not the right one. This one, this one is our 12 volt. Okay. And so I'm going to disconnect. Well, I'm going to unscrew this and keep it in here. I'm going to, this you can take off. The colors of the wires are very important, red and black. And we can see that we have a positive and you know, positive and a negative. Okay. And then we'll put the wire through and then double check. All right, positive here. Sometimes these are color coded like brass, uh, the, like or gold color. That's a that's a uh, negative lead. Okay, double check, positive, negative, okay. And then you can put that here. I don't think this has a particular orientation, but the plastic here, the plastic cover is very nice. I wish I had plastic covers for this, but I don't, okay. So let's get this wire here. We might have to move the battery over. And if we can't, I'm going to remove the USB to move it over. It should slide very nicely. Okay. okay, that's really nice. Okay, very nice, very nice. You gotta, that's why you got to take your time. Okay, nice. And you can see the wire is nice and pliable. It's uh, not in any way, um, not in any way like being forced. Okay. And there's the, the way go. Uh, fit there. This needs to be oriented correctly. Right, because we're gonna plug in, we're gonna plug in our power, right? So that needs to be one needs to be on the left, the other one needs to be on the right. And then um, now we got all four here. Okay, and then uh, the switch. Uh, sure. We're gonna do the switch. And that's, I cut the wires so that it'll fit sort of snug on the orientation. Now the wires, we gotta make sure uh, that these are connected right because you can easily switch these to the wrong place and then um, you can short something out. So we got green, blue, red. And then we're going to unlock this. So on, from top to bottom, this green one, there you see this is a color bronze. And there's only one black. So we know that goes in there. And then these two red ones, these are two positives. One is the battery and the other one goes to, um, to the um, cigarette lighter. Okay, so we got uh, blue and red, blue and red. So we're gonna put this here. So it goes red here on the bottom, and the blue one right there, and then the black one, the black one with the um, bronze color. And these are uh, the open barrels and I put um, I try to put some um, uh, covers on it when I made them 
so that they you know won't touch too much metal if it, if that happens at all. It's getting a little bit tighter in here, but the wires are still manageable. And it's a tight space. I mean, it's not it's not like it's you know not like it's big. Okay. That seems to be okay. These wires look okay. I might make these shorter next time. I don't know if that's making this wire more stiff. Uh, maybe. That's another thing to consider. Like right over here, you see? It seems like it's bending. It should be bending before that. But again, uh, I did that for stability. Uh, I, that was my first time doing it. Okay. So, unlock that. And then this one is going to be oriented a certain way, right? This way, most likely. And so this one you have... Um, looks like you have positive, positive on the right. This one is a little bit more challenging to take off. There we go. Positive and then negative. And we can see it says right there negative. A little hard to see. And this is a brass color for negative. That one goes in here. Or we can pass the wire through. Should have done that for that one, right? That would have been easier. Okay. So negative, this black positive, you should use positive and negative, positive as red and negative as black. You have different color wire, might be more challenging, but not impossible. You can use different color wires. Uh, it's just that these colors are universal. Okay. And let's see. Not sure why that's being lifted up. Okay, let's put that there. That should be lower, not higher. Hmm, maybe, let's see. Maybe this wire here. Ah, oh, okay, there you go. Let's put it over. That helps. And we just gotta make sure. And I know it's really hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to screw this guy. This wire here, this power for the solar, I don't think it gave me that much of an issue. This is bending a little bit, but should be okay. And again, I gotta get this right on spot. There we go. Okay. And again, uh, let's see. All right. All right. I think that's that's okay. These are again, these covers might be too long. So next time I'll just Make them shorter. Ah, look at that, see? Orientation's wrong. So I gotta twist this. Again, making sure everything is cool. Okay. Now, one thing about this power box is that, and I'm tightening it right here, making sure this is nice and tight. One of the things about this power box is that this will be. A box that can be inside the home. You uh, just connect it, and then you can power your radios and power your other devices. And the cool thing about having an external power supply is that you won't have that issue, maybe, of noise for the line, the power line. Possible, right? Oops, wait a minute. Okay, see, there you go. That's uh, that's not the orientation I wanted. Okay.
I'm not sure what happened there. I want the USB on top. All right, let's see. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Making sure that this doesn't go out of control either. Maybe this one will go under. Okay. Okay, nice hand tight. And yep, this will probably go under. Most likely. I think. Let's see what happens. Maybe not. Oh, hold on here. Yeah, it would be it would be better if it's underneath. sure everything is in its place wow okay so that took a little while a little while to do but not impossible and again this takes a lot of uh, practice um one connection i think is a little bit weird is this one that was really to the left a little bit isn't it Okay, but as you can see, there's still some areas here that uh, maybe I can use, um, you know, um, some, um, oh, I forget what this is called, this plastic sheeting that you can put over. But I don't, I don't think it's a good idea because you might have to unplug it. So maybe put some tape on there so it won't be so exposed. Um, Another thing it's missing, of course, is a fuse. There should be a fuse probably for the battery or for the solar panel. But the solar panel, I do have a fuse for the solar panel. Um, okay, so we have our connections here. As you can see, we haven't tested these nor the switch. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, now we can put the... Um, power mini. Let's put on the power first. Okay. Awesome. Let's put the USB. Let's put the sun. Uh, here's one power. Load. Load. Here's another load. Whoa. And the switch was on. Look at that. Pretty neat, right? <laughs> And this uh, voltage reader is not that great. I mean, it's not accurate, but it's it's it is good enough. Let's just say. Let's turn this off. No, this is off. Okay. And then now let's plug it uh, to the solar panel. I have a I have a bunch of wires here, but this one's color coded. This one's yellow, and so I know this one goes. This is the solar panel one. So I'm going to connect it here. Right now it says zero volts. And then we connect it right there. Boom. Nice. Okay. And we're getting four 19 volts, 19.9 volts. Well, it must be uh, floating. Battery is charged. Okay. So let's try these connections out. So we can, we can put the lid on if we want. That's a cool thing. We can definitely unhook it, and it's pretty flush. Don't have to cut anything out, and that's locked. There's some movement in there, and you probably could put something to make it so it won't um, move as much. Okay, so we got our USB 3, USB C right voltage 
gives me the amount of power. Uh, and then the on and off switch for this and also for the um, um, cigarette lighter. And then I have another USB uh, A to power the phone, right? This one to power my tablet. And this is to power anything else that I need as USB A. On the other side, we have uh, these orange Anderson power poles to, to tell me that they come from the same uh, load, right? And so we can test these. And we got a, a green light telling me that those are live. Very nice. And then this one comes from the second load. This one I'm, I want to use for a light. Very nice, right? And then we have this um, uh, cigarette lighter. Now the cigarette lighter would be great for our inverter, right? Power inverter. And what we can do is we can slide this in. It needs to get locked. There we go. And it goes, right? Very convenient. Um, definitely necessary so that you can plug in an outlet to it. Although it does um, give out some power. I mean, it, it will take in some power to invert the power. But that's it. I mean, wow from start to finish, you know, and of course you can always plug it in, like I mentioned before, right? Have all those plugs ready to go. You have uh, um, a way to measure this correctly. And don't forget that uh, if you're gonna use the Power Mini, I got a video for this, you gotta set up the battery correctly for the uh, lithium bio, I know, or in this case, the lithium um, iron phosphate number four. Okay, I hope that was useful, informative. Uh, if you have any questions, please um, uh, put it down on the uh, comments. Um, and please subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you later. This is Frank, Whiskey Charlie, Zero Oscar.